Hey everyone out in YouTube, this is Groovus X, and I'm coming to you with um, a few links that I put out about Dungeon Quest. Um, real quickly, first of all, thanks for checking this out, and um, the files are going to be uploaded as soon as I find a site to put these on for you to download the Solo Combat Arena. So let me give you a little, just a one minute backstory, because I know you guys want to check out these, this um, Battle Arena. I set up a quick game real quick to show, um, to demonstrate this. Um, Real quick, I had Dungeon Quest in the 80s, absolutely loved it, and I recently found out that um, Fantasy Flight Games re-released it. And I, the first thing, actually, it was weird, I was, I was researching was this combat system, and a lot of people were saying how they didn't like it. Um, I'm a very open gamer, so I got it, and I learned it, and I think it's awesome. I think it's very unique, and I think when you learn the finer points of it, it, it makes a really good battle system. So this video also is going to be a tutorial to show you um, how to play with this, with this, um, with this combat, the solo combat arena, where you play against an AI and you use the cards and the other power cards. Um, so, and before I show you this, I, I aim this primarily at the solo gamers because I love soloing games, and um, so this is for other soloers out there like myself. And um, I guess let's just get this going on now. So here is the first one. Again, I designed all these maps from scratch. And here you go. Here is the first of four. This one is Crypt of Misery, map one. So your figures are going to be going on these boards to do battle with. You know, like when you encounter a monster here, this is almost like a game in itself. And I like this because it, it's a nice deterrent from this game. You know, you're exploring, taking damage, and I don't know, it's not really a break because it can get really hectic, but I, I like this, you know, game in itself, and then you go back to this game. So, um, maybe I'll tell you a couple of things as I unveil the maps. Um, if you notice, there's a blue and red crystal on the floor. The blue crystal is where you place um, the hero, and the red, of course, the monster goes there. Um, so let's move to the next map here. And this is map two, the Forgotten Runes. And, you know, all the layouts are kind of different to give different strategic um, options to where you want to go. For instance, the hero will start out in this corner of the map, and the monster up here. Um, you put the monster attack cards here, you put the blue, your heroes there, combat stack goes there, and then the combat deck goes there. Apply your damage to your hero here, and you put the monster card and hit points here. And one thing that was important as I'm showing you this is I like things to look very, I guess you could say coherent. And I went through like five different drafts because I really wanted, I love this game so much, I wanted everything to look like you bought this. Like when you bought the game, you know, all the stuff came with it. And I think other gamers are like that too. So there we go. Map two is the Forgotten Runes. And let's move on to this one. Here's map three. This is a very interesting map. It doesn't look like a lot, but there's a lot of strategic options in this one. This is the Dragonfire Pits. And to give you an idea, it's just, again, um, the monster gets placed in the red crystal here on the blue, and if you can see this here, but this cat creature I put inside there coming out. There's a bunch of bones inside there. Um, so, and then there's going to be one more map, and then I want to say if this goes over good and people download it and they really enjoy it, I have a few other maps I'm working on. Believe it or not, this takes a few days to make um, a map. I, I take my time and try to do one real quality. So the last map... Um, this is a very interesting one here. This is the Ancient Depths. And if you notice, when the monster starts out, it starts out on this side, and the hero starts here. And we have a girl chained up over some kind of drainage thing and a bunch of rats and a statue. Where these maps get, the other maps, you notice, you can get all the way around. I should start by saying that you can't go around objects. You can't step on objects. Anything that's on the ground is impassable, okay? Well, this one, on all these maps, you can get around. And on this map, I thought it'd be interesting to design it so 
actually the, the, the hero and monster will come down on each side and meet in the middle. Um, so I'll tell you what, let's get this going on because you probably want to know how to play this then. I think we will start with this one here, the dragon fire pits. Okay, now when I, when I create stuff like this, I want it to be very easy. I hate complicated roles and ambiguous roles. I like it to be very easy to understand. Okay, so we're going to say your um, Krutz here just encountered a skeleton. So if you're playing the game and you pulled, um, you know, you pulled your dungeon or your, yeah, your dungeon deck and the skeleton comes up. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take the skeleton, come over here and put it right there. Everything's labeled real easy to put it where it goes. Skeleton goes there. I already pulled one, but you know, you do this to see how much life it has. It has three life. So, you can set that right there. And grab three life tokens. Put that on his card. Um, I'm kind of just firing here, so I don't know. Hopefully, I'd, you got this is going to make sense to you guys. Okay, next, you take your hero off the board. Now to remember where is that you can take this your for the catacombs and place it on there. Um, oh, also I rebought all of the minis. Uh, I got some D and D minis, and so um, I, I might do another video to show you what I picked to make it look like the other ones. And it didn't cost that much. I mean, I think I got all the minis for about sixty bucks, and it replaced all of the minis and the monsters. So what we do is we come over here. And the hero, of course, goes on the blue crystal. Excuse the white edges. I'm supposed to cut those. I did not do that yet. And then, since we're fighting a skeleton monster, here's the skeleton. And he would go on the red crystal. Now, guys, give this combat a chance. If you, if you went away with it thinking, ah, oh, it sucks, it, it's really a very good system. Okay, so we're going to get our combat cards here. And each one, you know, he gets six. So what we'll do is deal out um, five over here to the monster. One, two, three, four, and five. And then Krutz, that gets six actually. Four, five, and six. And we place the combat deck right here. I tried to keep this board on an eight and a half by 11. I didn't want to make a huge gigantic thing. So it's a little tight, but I mean, I've got kind of big hands and it doesn't really interfere much. It, it plays pretty good. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna make this a two-parter. This was just kind of like the introduction to this. And when we come back, you are going to see um, how this is played. Before that though, I already had to set aside the power cards for the monsters, four power cards. And then we have Kretzvex power cards. And this, um, I know a lot of people said, well, why can't we use power cards with the other rules? So I implemented um, an easy way to use these with that. So this is kind of what the setup looks like. And again, this does draw the game out, but I think it's really fun and strategic um, to play this way. So this was the introduction video. Come back, and I'm going to teach you about how to move and all that. So again, thanks for viewing, and I'll see you back here for part two.